down and listen to records Smell the cover, read all the verses Tell me about your favorites on vinyl and vision Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of Vinyl and Vision. Today's very special episode is our 100th episode. Um, I just have to say that I am very pleased with myself to uh, to say that I've, I've made it. I've made it to 100. When I started this podcast uh, back in September of 2018, I think, um, that was my goal, actually. If I can make it to 100, that's pretty pretty great. And so here I am. Uh, today's very special guest is Justin Pearson. Most of you probably know Justin Pearson as a member of um, Struggle, Swing Kids, Retox, Def Club, The Locust, uh, Dead Cross, and the founder of 31G Records. So this was a pretty great get for me. Um, I feel like, much like in the conversation that Justin and I had that you will be listening to shortly, um, everything led to this point, you know, um, everything, all 99 episodes prior to this episode today led up to this point, um, and what is to be determined in the future? Another existential question that, uh, that Justin and I touch on in our conversation, uh, I do not know. <laughs> all I know is I'm going to take a break, I'm gonna, uh, kind of maybe settle back for a little bit take some time, reflect, uh, maybe redesign some things. Uh, there's a lot of things, a lot of things that can happen. But um, if you are tuning in for the first time, thank you for joining me. And uh, there are many other conversations, uh, 99 other conversations that I've had on this show, uh, some of which uh, were some great guests that maybe you might know as well. Um, Eric Paul uh, from Arabon Radar and Psychic Graveyard. Uh, Peter Prescott of Mini Beast and Mission of Burma. Uh, Roger Miller of Mission of Burma and Trinary System. Uh, who else? Weasel Walter uh, from Flying Lutenbachers. Um, Steve Meadows, actually, one of my great friends, uh, guitarist at Rarabon Raider as well, and Doomsday Student, and currently a new band called There. So all those conversations are there, too. If you care to partake in those, uh, I would do, really do appreciate it. Um, I really do appreciate Justin for joining me for this very special episode. And uh, I hope that you enjoy it too. And uh, all that we ask here at Vinyl and Vision and have asked for the past 99 episodes is that you do all the things you do with the internet, please. Like, share, subscribe, comment, rate, review, all of those things. All of them help, and we do really, really do appreciate it. Uh, again, folks, thank you very much, and enjoy. What are you doing, man? Oh, uh, I've been on tour with three different bands in the last week, um, and then I leave tomorrow on tour with Def Club, one of the bands, ag again. So I'm, I'm a little exhausted, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. I was just well, going to ask you a question, actually. Like, one of the first things I was thinking about was this, like, do you still get any kind of, like, <clears throat> stage jitters, like, before performing? Yeah, it's weird. <clears throat> Some people, like, think, you know, are you nervous or whatever? But it's not nervous. It's, like, I don't know. There's, like, this thing where... um I'm anxious waiting to get it to start. I hate like the wait to get it to start, but I'm not like nervous until I see like other people that I've collaborated with or like, I don't know, my mom or someone like in the audience where I'm like, fuck, I don't want this to be, you know, stupid or whatever. <laughs> um, so it's usually like that. If I don't know the people, then I, I it doesn't really affect me um, at all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the the stranger in the place you are, the better. <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah. W which is funny because we're going to talk about Rob Wright, and he was at a locust show, and that was insane for me to uh, to play. I was like really, really nervous. Um, but yeah, we did it, and I think he liked it. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, did you you get to yeah. talk with him at all? Yeah, <clears throat> a little bit. It was um such a nice. He was there for a very um bad reason um but it was nice to talk to him and, and i think um i hope that we provided something um you know i, I don't know emotionally Fisher. beneficial to him yeah uh at at that at that point so well i don't know yeah okay was this a while ago yeah that was the last um i think it was the very last time that the locust toured europe uh like a proper european tour we did we did like a an a atp show there I think 
as the last time we ever played in Europe, but, but like before that, when we were just touring, it, 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 he, it was um, in Holland, it was our last show. And he, he showed up randomly because he, they had, they had to cancel some dates or something. And he was waiting for a flight the next day and came to our show. And that was um, a, a pleasant surprise for me. And um, ho- hopefully for him, it was, it was, yeah, I don't know. It was a, it was a cool thing for me for sure. Um, I can only speak for myself, but it was cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, from what you're telling me or for what I, from what I understand, I mean, he must be kind of an idol to you. <clears throat> I mean, I don't have, I, I don't know. The idol is a weird word because um, sure. I think like, you know, even, even for me, like <clears throat> when I was, um, when I was 12, I, I, I met um, the cramps and it, and it, and it, it showed me that like, there were no, like the, it, it got rid of like the idea of like what uh, people's perception of, of maybe an idol or a rock star or celebrity, whatever you want to call it. Celebrity. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. I think that especially too, like now throughout my life, I've, I've, I've been able to like intermingle with people that are very popular or, you know, or that are celebrities, I guess, you know. So um, but as far as like idols, I mean, I would say like I would rather just use words like an influence or um, I don't know, just someone that's got, got like um the, like this has like very very um important energy or something i don't know because sure. i would rather i would prefer someone not to call me that stuff if that was the case you know so so i i, I an idol or a celebrity because i'm not i'm just some fucking asshole you know so so <laughs> i i kind of like uh yeah try to keep it like that i guess yeah, yeah I, I hear you i know what you mean i mean uh it, it's kind of putting too much weight onto the the persona of like musicians that well let's just say musicians for now because that's what we're talking about yeah um but you know but this is kind of what what the whole thing is about is talking to you any or whoever it is that i'm speaking with about something that was influential to you an album that specifically that was influential to you i mean and you chose no means knows wrong uh specifically because you said it, it was kind of the reason that you got to play bass or that you wanted to play bass yeah i think you know as a child, uh, the only other band, and I and I, I probably should just like not say this, but I, but I'll go ahead and say it. But I think the only other band that really stood out as far as like the bass guitar. Okay, let me just go back a little bit more because I when I was sure. when I was really young, I was obsessed with um, the Sex Pistols, and I, I liked them a lot. And I didn't really understand music; I just liked the attitude and like the the overall like um, thing that they were doing. Um, and, and, and discovering punk, um, was, was very important. Um, but I realized like, uh, even as a, at an early age, so this is like maybe around 10 or 11 when I started diving into things that like Sid Vicious wasn't a good bass player and he was a sort of like a prop or a persona. I get, I would like to say persona instead of a prop. Cause that sounds like kind of rude. Cause I think he was, mm-hmm. I think he was important in, in some sort of historical um realm but maybe not as a as a musician um right I so i i never really like uh, put um a lot of emphasis on bass necessarily until maybe i saw that movie thrashing and i and i saw red hot chili peppers in it and i was like oh that's cool that band really fo- focuses on the bass guitar obviously and and even like and and you know i'm sure if Lee's cool i don't know him or anything but like you know, I did a little, I, I was very, when I was, a, when I was a child, I was very, um, um, I don't know, like I always wanted to like figure everything out. So, so this is before the internet, obviously. So I, f- I found out that he was in, and that he was in fear or tried out for fear and, and they, yeah, and they, they kicked him out because he wouldn't play it with a pick. And I was like, that's funny and cool, but I, I think I want to play with a pick because Sid played with a pick yeah. or whatever. You know, I mean, my, 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 my perspective of, of musicians and, and music was, was, was a little odd right. at that point. Um, but yeah, so when I did end up getting, I, I, I mean, I was obsessed with the Dead Kennedys too. And so I would get all those um, alternative tentacles um, catalogs and the records. And, and so I would just buy shit, you know, and I, and I, and I got No Means No wrong. And I remember just being like, just, fucking floored by the 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 bass and i was like what is going on with this um this instrument and this band because it's very much up front or maybe not like up front past the guitar but it's it's equal so like before you know you think of like the sex pistols even even with glenn matlock on bass it was always like kind of like in the back you know like he's following the the you know there's no sick bass line i mean he's in the pocket or whatever as a bassist and it was just pretty 
um, it was good. He's a yeah. good bass player. The bass um, but he wasn't like guitar. It's guitar. Sure. Rock. And so, so when I heard, when I heard no means no, I was just like, this is some shit. I don't know what's going on. This is so wild. And I, and I just, I just like fully got obsessed with, with, uh, with no means no because of the bass. Um, yeah. and that, and that, and that did influence me a little bit, uh, uh, with bass playing, not so much in my first band that I played bass in to some extent, but like, I, I just followed the guitar lines or if I wrote the bass riffs, it was like what it, it was just one it was very like one dimensional and and so that was that but it, right. it it did take full effect in the locust for for sure right right yeah i mean i could definitely hear that i mean i could definitely hear like some kind of influence some kind of connection there but it's really funny that like because I, I i watched your doc um I'm, i can't remember the name of it right now uh don't fall in love with yourself yeah you're yeah. and um so i feel like i know a lot about your kind of history and kind of how you grew up and stuff but but what really interests me from speaking with you now is this like how how were you so tuned in to like the instruments at such a young age you know like 10 you're saying 10 like you kind of got into music right so i mean like how did you know even what a bass was at that time i don't know i mean well my mom had a cousin that l let me borrow um <laughs> this awesome les paul uh, gibson les paul guitar and it was funny because that ended up be, being used in Struggle um, when we first started um, by Eric Allen um, because he needed a guitar. But, like, I, I don't know why. I mean, I think, um, again, I mean, I was into all kinds of music. I really, really liked the cramps. And, I, I yeah, I don't know why because I remember with the cramps was a good example because I, I, I realized, like, sometimes – because I saw the cramps when I was 12 and when I met them, I, I realized they had a bass player. And, and then – but before that, it was always two guitars – and so it was strange hmm. to me because, so I, you know, I, I obviously love all the early incarnations of, of the cramps. So I, I, I like, I like Brian Gregory's guitar playing a lot. Um, but when I saw them, they had Candy Del Mar on bass and, and that was cool too, because I was like, Whoa, she's rad. Like, you know, who, who's this woman? Like, and, and there's a bass guitar. So I started trying to like figure out the differences. Um, I noticed it. Yeah. I guess because I just, I was, you know, a little kid, it was like, it was like, um, most people at that age, I think are obsessed with certain things. And that was what I was obsessed with. So, so going and seeing the mm -hmm. cramps at age 12, expecting to see Brian Gregory and, and not, and then seeing this other person that was like, just as cool and different on base. And, you know, that was the thing that I kind of just thought about a lot, I suppose. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, so like, yeah, yeah. yeah your curiosity you were a curious kid about music specifically it was kind of an obsession for you at a young age and that's yeah but I not mean, but not like a but not like a musical like not a music theory like i didn't know what the fuck i was doing i didn't know i don't know notes i don't know how to read music i still don't i don't you know i just was like it was just more like a i don't know how to explain it like it wasn't a, a, it wasn't from a musical standpoint it was more from like a this, uh, the cultural I don't even know. kind of aspect what, of it, like what punk was, like the aggression that you kind of saw or heard through the music, something like that. Yeah, but it wasn't. It's not, not even that. It was. It was, it was just. It, it, just a. Just a detail. Like, because I have. I'm like you know. I'm sure I have OCD and like I. I just. I kind of looked at the band and was like, it's different. I, it, not that it was like, what's the bass? I need to figure out like the 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 musical uh, you know place of a bass guitar in the in the in the perspective of of a song. Or I I just was like. Oh, it's right. different because there's another person and that was it. You know, it was like the, right. okay. the, the these like weird little details, it, you know, again, like not that it was like, oh, cool. Bass guitar opposed to like guitar, you know, in the, you know, four to six strings or it was none of that shit. It was like, Brian Gregory's cool. Okay. He's gone. There's this awesome woman playing bass. Let me just understand that. And it wasn't from like a musical theory perspective. It was like, just from like this cool, maybe like artistic I guess cultural, but more artistic perspective. Like, oh, there's a different person that's got like rad swag, and they just happen right. to have that swag on base, you know? Yeah. So okay. that was that was kind of that. Yeah. Well, so uh, so like, what's the first uh, piece of music that you bought for yourself? <clears throat> I think uh, it's. Um, I always forget the name of it. I could look it up, but it's. It was this. It was like purple or pink covered um, Stevie Wonder record. It was like a triple LP. And I have no idea why I bought it, but I remember buying it at this place called Gemco. Well, my mom did. Um, and that was like a, a pretty cool thing. And then it, I mean, 
I was always into music. I, I was, I got suckered into liking Kiss at, at an early age, um, and then I realized they sucked. Uh, and then, right. and and then I, and then I, and then I just figured out like cool shit, you know. Because I also remember hearing Sticks, Mr. Roboto, at a little, you know, as a little kid, and going like, like that's cool because it's like got robot shit in it. Mm-hmm. So, and then, then it was early on, like you know, discovering Devo, and 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 spe- and specifically, I think a big point, a big launching point for me was the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which had um, Sig Six Butnik in it and and Yellow, and that that kind of got me into like a lot of weirdo new wave electronic music. Um, oh yeah, okay. And that and that was the push. So so it was like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, that movie, and then and then skateboarding got me into the Thrasher skate rock comps. And okay. through Thrasher Skate Rock comps, it was like discovering bands like Septic Death and and um, Di and and um, the Accused. Specifically, the Accused was something fucking seriously sh- crazy for me. So yeah, um, huh. skateboarding was was the the thing that got me got me into all that. Yeah, kind of a gateway. Yeah, you get that a lot with skateboarders. Um, wait, but so so it's were you self guided in all of your exploration and music, or was there anyone that was like kind of uh, you know feeding you anything or kind of guiding you in in any sort? You know, um, no, no one really. Um, <clears throat> I, I think my, I think my, yeah, people were feeding me. St- I mean, the world was, you know, and and I think I'm, I, I, looking back, like I'm, I'm really, really grateful that my mom was was supportive of me being into weird shit. I mean, she, she was pretty hard on me the way I looked. She didn't want me to look like fucked up, and um, that kind of came with the whole thing for me being into punk. Um, mm-hmm. but she was like really supportive of me. Um. She she had her cousin let me borrow the guitar, and that was really awesome for me to just kind of have an instrument. I didn't know what I was doing, you know. And and at one point, I asked her if she could um, help me take lessons, and she paid for me to take bass lessons. And I I, I think I took two lessons, and and the, the second time, the guy was kind of a dick to me, and he was telling me that I, I I can't play with a bass, and that and like real bass players don't play with the bass. And it was weird for me because um, I looked up to you know, all of these bands and I, and I noticed there were these great bass players that were um, playing with picks. And I, and I, and I, and I was like, well, I like all these bands and these people I think are really good bass players and they are playing with picks. So you as a teacher are an asshole and I'm going to not, not take your class, you know, or take lessons from you. And so my mom was fine with that because it it was expensive. And then I just, I think soon after that just started playing in in a band and kind of just learning as it, went along and I was always grateful to play with um, other players that knew what they were doing. So I think it helped me um, learn. Um, Yeah. But as far as like the stuff getting fed, you know, it's really not, not like I didn't have like, I don't have any siblings and my parents, you know, I think my parents like maybe liked music, but they didn't, you know, they definitely didn't like what I was into. Um, Right. But my mom was very supportive of of me as a, as a um, person that played music or tried to play music. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because that just seems so strange to me. I mean, I, I have brothers and stuff like that, and and I don't think they were a great influence on me, to to be completely honest. But uh, but so I find it really interesting that you know you were a single child, uh, an only child, and and but you had this uh affinity for it, and you found it, and you sought it out, and 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 especially to get to get into, you know, more obscure music you know it's just like like how how quickly do you think the progression was from like the first time you kind of like got into something and like maybe say that stevie wonder record to getting into you know more punk and you know obscure weird electronic music and so forth i think maybe it was like a cultural thing because it was for me it was like this the timing of everything because i was kind of into like okay, nineteen eighty four when 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 nineteen eighty four came out by Van Halen, I was very very much into that band, into that record specifically. Hot for mm-hmm. Teacher, I thought the the video was wild, and I and I really loved the the intro double kick stuff was great, and I was right. just like, man, music is cool. And David Lee Roth was like a kind of a cool personality, and I, I was like, yeah, he, he just seems fucking wild, you know, like something that a kid would like. So so I was really into nineteen eighty four, and then soon after that, break dancing took over and 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 i got into rap and hip-hop specifically like tommy boy records and a lot of stuff they were putting out and i and i liked the and i don't mean any disrespect to a lot of those bands but it wasn't it, to me it didn't seem musical in the sense there's like guitar riffs and and like hooks it was it was it was like this weird vocal 
you know, bar, like these bars of vocals and, a, and, a, and, and like sometimes occasionally like a lot of like, in the, especially early like stuff on, on Tommy Boy, it was like, like lasers, you know, pew, pew, or like whatever. And like synthesized right. kick and snare and, and are sampled, you know, beats and stuff. And I think all of that was really um, attractive to me because it seemed almost like science fiction sounds and, and, and it didn't necessarily seem like um, uh traditional music. It, it wasn't traditional music, I guess. You know, it was on the it was on the cutting edge of 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 this sort of evolution, this cultural right. and musical yeah. evolution. So I was just really into that, and like through breakdancing, the whole thing seemed fucking wild. It was like, um, also like I grew up in Arizona, and it was like really racist. I I thought white people were fucked, you know, and so I I, I latched on to this this um, art form that was created by people of color, and I thought it was just. Um, it was just so informative and so inspiring. And, and I, and I just um, really wanted to be about that. And so it was really like the, the, the hip hop element. And then also at the time got into metal and, and stuff like that um, Slayer and, and um, a lot of, a lot of metal through, through thrash and punk from, from sk um, the skate rock stuff. Um, hmm. And then, yeah, it was just like, I was just sucking it all in, you know, Wh whatever was, hmm. Cool and whatever my parents didn't really like, I thought was like the jam. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they they came across a lot they didn't like that you were bringing in. <laughs> they, I mean, my mom like was kind of just like, don't look like an asshole, and I wanted to look like an asshole, and she she was like really concerned with the way I looked. My dad was more of like just this fucking dick who was like telling me, and I had no idea what he was talking about, but he was like, you like the sex results, you're going to become a junkie and a heroin addict. And I'm like, I don't even know what drugs are. Like, I just think this guy looks fucking cool. Right. And I like their attitudes and shit. And so since my dad didn't like it, I was like, I'm going to get into that, you know, like, because my dad was kind of a dick and would abuse my mom. And he was just, a, he was a bad parent and, a, and an alcoholic that was abusive to my, to my mom and not to me um, physically, but, um, but, um, I was like, cool. My dad doesn't like this. I'm fully gonna get into it because he he was pretty like shitty and like destroyed some of my cassettes. I think my Misfits and the Cramps and and I was like, man, I need all that. That's like, those are my favorite things right now as right. A, as, a, as a you know ten year old or whatever. Like, I want those things. Right. So I I, I I I it made me get into it more. No, it was great because it made me like really get into it. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, you know, when you tell a kid no, they want to do it more. And I, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this more. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have kids actually. So yeah, I kind of, I'm dealing with it now. <laughs> I, I am that guy. I'm just like, Oh man, what the hell? Yeah. It's At funny though. That I, perspective. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I, think, yeah, yeah. I always yeah, ask them, I'm just like, tell me what you want. Tell me what you like, man. Cause I want to give yeah. it to you. I'm not, I'm not yeah. that dude. I'm not my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My dad was an yeah. asshole too. So I'm just like, please yeah. tell me what you want so I can take you to that yeah. show or I can take you to that thing. Like, please, <laughs> you know, it's so much. Yeah. Yeah very different generation for but us you know maybe you need it maybe you need to secretly be like don't do it and then they're gonna and then they'll and then they'll do it you know? i guess i um, should yeah i should just yeah. <laughs> jedi mind trick these kids <laughs> yeah. be like your art sucks i think <laughs> yeah 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 and the next thing you know they'll be the next basquiat or something yeah yeah i hope so i would i would love that that would be great yeah so uh all right so so uh no means no a canadian band uh this album wrong specifically um yeah. came out in 1989 so you how did you get your hands on it I, I, um, so 89, I was, um, 14 and I, I just, I think I just, I either mailed or mailed it from, from, um, alternative tentacles. Or I, or I got to be really good friends with these people at this record store in San Diego called off the record. And, um, would just go in there, you know, weekly and just bother them and hang out and ask them questions and want to look at everything. And, um, I think the fact that it was released or affiliated with um, Alternative Tentacles got my attention right away. But it's weird because the copy I have is 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 pre Alternative Tentacles, so I don't know. I don't. It's I don't understand how I figured it out. Um, huh. I have it right here, actually. Yeah. So so it's it's um Cargo, which is a San Diego based thing. Okay. I think Cargo, there, it was a big deal in San Diego with Cargo Records. I knew about that as a kid. And then it's on Wrong Records, which I'm assuming like sort of self-released. But it's Cargo right. 7. I don't know how I figured it out, but I, I I will definitely say that there was some kind of alternative tentacles, Jello Biafra connection um, to that right. band. And that's how I found it. And then looking at the cover and like photos of them where they're, they're, they're wearing masks and shit and like have like the, the one of them's wearing a priest outfit. I was like, 
that's cool like i it's so weird to me um yeah the aesthetic i mean the cover artwork is just it's it, yeah like it just it may it, it spoke to me in every way possible um and i think that that's important uh, the artwork is very important to me um and, and mm. but it spoke to me uh, uh the aesthetic of the band it was it was it sounded great obviously but then i figured out that they looked fucking weird and they probably were totally weird and that was definitely why i was you know I, I was i was gravitating towards that i needed to like figure it out yeah um huh. so i yeah i bought the record and, and i and i um you know bought it because this is before you could check anything out like i just had to like buy the record and 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 hope that it was good or good right. enough and, right. and i remember just putting it on just being like what is going on this is so wild uh you know the instrumentation is so weird and and even like i mean again i don't i don't think i really understood um music necessarily or like like songwriting but i mm -hmm. it in retrospect i'm like wow it's weird and then there's like these catchy hooks so it, it has the whole like spectrum of stuff for <clears throat> for me uh at, at my my you know 14 year old self to like really um i don't know want to soak it up it, right, it, right. It, it, it did it did everything for me yeah yeah at the time and you weren't playing bass at that point um i don't think i was i think i think it was when i was 14 i i was like hey mom i need i need you to help me somehow obtain a bass guitar can i please get you to buy this cheap piece of shit one and i'll just pay <laughs> i'll work my ass off and, and figure out a way to get you know get, to pay you back and right. and she knew some of my friends at the time um who were in my first band um the singer of struggle dylan sharf and the drummer uh jose palafox and so i i, I kind of was like i want to start a band with them and and um she was like okay but you you know she, she didn't know like you need to play bass or like you know she didn't know what i was just like i need this one kind of guitar i don't care what brand or whatever i just need like i just wanted to look not you know just get a black one like i don't want a dumb looking one and right. and and that was it i didn't know anything else. it was a washburn I and mean, those are fine bases but um yeah i mean fuck i wish i could have had something else um but it, it took me a minute to get um a cooler base or one that i appreciated more sure um so she bought it for me yeah and um and then we started the band um but and again it didn't <clears throat> the band kind of didn't have any um, resemblance of my musical influence pertaining to no means no but at the same time and not to discredit no means no but i was into like all kinds of shit you know i, I really love septic death and 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 um i mean my taste of music was um all over pretty, the place yeah uh, it was pretty vast from what you're telling me just from yeah. these few years of your childhood yeah it's it's pretty way way more vast than i i fucking knew at that time in my life <laughs> i didn't know shit well, i just knew I, what was on the radio uh, you know or mtv yeah i guess so yeah i guess i somehow figured out these like little um wormholes to go down um right. so yeah when i started playing music it really wasn't like let me play like no means no it was kind of just because we were kind of like the band was kind of like <clears throat> me metal like hard, chugga chugga hardcore, you know. So so yeah. it was it was it was a different vibe, but um, those influencers were there. I mean, there was some pretty like the first struggle show. I I, I hope never services um, ever for many reasons. Um, I mean, for one, we played it in someone's garage that my dear friend Jerem set up. Um, but there were like all these Nazis there and shit. You know that was fucking stupid. But um, I thought. Oh, I'm I'm gonna wear a mask too, like no means no does, you know. And I wear this dumbass mask; it made no fucking sense. And I also realized I can't really see shit with the mask on, right. <laughs> which is kind of funny in retrospect because then I didn't end up doing it for like most of my time in the Locust. But um, right. um, but as a as a 15 year old, I didn't know how to play music, and so I really needed to see what the hell I was doing. Sure. Um, so it's yeah. different. But it, so yeah, first show wore a mask; it was dumb. Uh, you know poor musicianship but I, I i i i it was i was doing like kind of funkier shit and i was playing with my fingers you know and i got because i was i was i was like oh, i guess i have to play with my fingers so in, in in my first band i played with my fingers which was just bizarre for me hmm. um 
And then, and do, yeah, it do, took me do you do time. both? Do you do picks too sometimes or no? Only picks. I don't play with my fingers anymore. Yeah, oh, as soon okay. as as soon as struggle broke up, I I I I I took a little bit of a break. I sang in a band called Swing Kids, and then and then started the Locust. And then in Locust, it was right away. I played with the pick because again, too, like shifting the aesthetic. Um, when I started playing the Locust, we wanted to sound like this band crossed out, and and I and it was right away like blast beats and playing fast. So I, I knew yeah. I needed to um, pick fast. Uh, right. I couldn't do that with the. Because even recording too would struggle. I remember like recording and and not having the same um, sort of attack that a pick would have had. Sure. So I'm playing these like <clears throat> there's um the last struggle recording we did, which is like on an LP. Uh, there's a there's a break where there, you can hear the bass line happening, and I and I and I and I should have played with the pick, but I didn't, you know. And I and I wish I did. Like you have yeah. to learn, I guess, um, that you suck and then get better. So I, I was like, oh man, I should have played it with a pick. It would have sounded way more sicker. Oh um, yeah. It's it's all it's so. all a learning curve thing. I mean, you were so young. I mean, you struggle, you were 15, right? 15 and 16. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's in, insanely young to be doing that stuff, to be recording and touring. It's but insane. I meet I meet people I meet people that are that age that 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 play music or even then like I remember hearing about like I think Sammy from Youth of Today was fifteen when he was in Youth of Today and like mm -hmm. I mean I'm sure there's a lot of examples like that right you know through, yeah. throughout time um, I mean I was I, mean, yeah, I was I fifteen when I started playing bass too and and we did do shows but we didn't we didn't tour and recording was yeah very very minimal you know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all a learning curve, you know, it's like, you just kind of figure out <laughs> what you're even doing. I mean, it's just like, yeah, I had no idea what was going on. I was just like, you know, my brother would taught me how to play just by showing me like where to put my fingers on the neck, you know, and yeah. just like learning covers. I, I still have, you still do but that? I still have no idea what's going on. No, I still have no oh, idea what's either. going on most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, either it's yeah. all ear. It's all ear. Just whatever yeah. sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, just in life, but yeah, but musically too. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, hey, I, I'm no scholar, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see. So, um, we should just go ahead and get into this record. I mean, I don't want to like take up too much yeah. time. I know that I know you got a lot of shit going on. So, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to go down a few. I'm going to go down the list, and I'll ask you a question per song, and I'm going to skip a few. Okay. Okay. And um, some of the questions I have. We we have time. You can do all. We can do all of them. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, yeah. I, I don't have, I don't have too many because this album was really okay. hard because there was so there's like, there's like nothing about this band out there, you know, especially like there's a very limited amount of stuff. You know, I was doing a lot of research and I couldn't find anything specifically about this record or at least nothing about like the making of it or the recording of it, huh. you know? Um, so it was kind of, kind of hard. I had to kind of like figure out a lot about this. And so I did end up skipping a bunch of songs. But okay. uh, but it is a you great probably album, know more than yeah you might know more than I do about it I mean my my I kind of know a little bit about stuff and then I and then I'm good you know I I uh, I wish I I wish I knew knew more um anyhow yeah, yeah. so well I know they have a book yeah. coming out like I actually in the I research know. I saw that this this booking I was just like well it's a little too late for me I wish I had that book now and that would be cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> I ended yeah, up having saw... a lot more information about it. Yeah, someone had hit me up about that book. I don't know like what what the conversation was, but they 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 reached out to me. That's that's like maybe the author that's working on it. So I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, at some at some point, I'll I'll look into it. But for now, um, let's see. Let's start off with the first song. It's catching up. Um, that's the, that's my, I think my favorite one. I that's this track that the even Dead Cross I think covered it in 2017 on tour um we were yeah that song's great it's just a great opener uh, the whole the whole album's great but yeah that that that's um probably yeah. my favorite one you okay know? yeah i mean yeah. um by the way i didn't know this record when you suggested it so i was mm. listening to it the first time uh as a 43 year old and i was just <laughs> like this is this record's fucking crazy <laughs> yeah it's, which is which is pretty wild because not a lot of um artists get to to get to um stand time you know or like still stay yeah you know whatever relevant. it doesn't seem right. it, yeah it doesn't seem it doesn't seem dated no necessarily no. um yeah but I mean, even like even like it's catching up as it was crazy too i remember like putting it on the record player and kind of just standing there being like fuck this is crazy and like not like walking away or not sitting down just kind of like letting it 
play, just standing there, like just looking at it, you know, spinning and, and absorbing something. So that's kind of like a good, yeah. that's only happened to me. I can think of three records off the top of my head that, that where I, where I just didn't leave the record player. I just stood and listened right. to the entire thing. So, yeah. Huh. Do you want to share those with me? <laughs> yeah. So, um, wrong is de- no means no wrong is definitely one. The first drive like Jehu record is definitely one of them. And okay. the first Antioch Arrow record, which is, I it didn't have a name at the time, but it's called, um, the lady is a cat. Those are the three records that I 100% huh. put on and stood there until it was over. And I was just like, this is some fucked up shit. Wow. And, and, and then- like even flipped it and was just and stayed there, stayed put. Just kept, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Antioch Hero record's really short, but um, I remember doing the same thing with um. Man, it's crazy. I I, I can remember doing that same thing with all three records and kind of and kind of just like okay, so with no means no, like putting it on and 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 hearing it and 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 at the time when we go to the next song, I would think like, whoa, shift in, in, in like vibe, like, wow, this is crazy. Cause I was used to like, you know, a, like let's, let's use the cramps or septic death as a, as an example. Like it, it seems like sure. the, the, the same band, like through the whole record. So, so when I put on a music, I was like, it, the, the vibe just shifted a lot, you know? So I remember thinking like, whoa. Yeah. They uh, had dy- dynamics kind of like they knew how to like, totally. mix up the genre a little bit. Yes, um, which can be good and bad because there are a few songs where I'm just like, eh, you know, it's like I'm not the biggest fan of like the funky, funky shit that they do. Um, sure. I kind of like the more straight, straightforward, like driving, um, no means no stuff, because um, <clears throat> there are a couple funky tracks on 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 this album. Um, right. Yeah, uh, I, I heard that for sure. <laughs> there, there's a couple I yeah. would skip to. But uh, but overall, I mean, I think it's yeah. an amazing album. I think it, it is timeless. I think that it and, and I think it's kind of the 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 consensus amongst fans is that this is one of the like probably their best the album. one yeah the one if you yeah i think anybody if if anyone that's a fan of no means no if you were going to say like what's the one i should start with it's always wrong you know and then and then you kind of kind of go to the other other stuff um sure but yeah yeah i'll do that i'm going to get into the other stuff uh shortly <laughs> but uh so it's catching up so lyrically i found that this song is about zombies did you, did you I don't know. That? I yeah, I maybe. I mean, I it more metaphorically speaking, it could be. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, because even if you think about it, like it could be about humanity. I don't I don't know. Um that's true. Yeah. I mean, um, I guess it's Rob Wright is the lyricist, right? I think so. Because John yeah. Wright's the drummer, right? Yes. So I think Rob I don't know if someone lyrics. else yeah, but the guitar player um sings sometimes too, doesn't he? I think they both sing. I don't know, maybe maybe right. they maybe so. Okay. All right. Well, whoever but, um, it was, they, they, the lyrics are kind of intriguing because they're it's not it's not necessarily straightforward. So it seems that there's a lot of like uh, innuendo or some poeticism in there. Yeah. There's some uh, interpretational yeah. things, which is it's it's brilliant. Really, it's it's really yeah. It can be really beautiful at times, especially like yeah. I mean, when you're discovering a band and there's a there's like metaphorical lyric you know lyrics for you to kind of sit on it's mm-hmm. nice and 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 i like i mean and that that's a huge influential thing that i think i adapted as well in yeah. my or adopted in my in my life in my in the stuff that i wrote because i want you to listen and think about it and if you get it right cool and if you get it wrong that's cool too but it might not actually be wrong like maybe you know, I don't know how like they were writing their stuff, but for me, it's like I, when I would write, I'd be like, "I'll just write this, and you can get what you want out of it," and that's cool, you know? Cause, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, kind of uh, what it, a creative writer teacher taught me back in high school was just like, you know, that that that's the art of of words is like when you put them together, it's just like you might have an intention of what you're saying, but if somebody else reads it, they could interpret it a different way, and that doesn't mean that it's wrong. You know, it's actually that kind of makes it more profound. Right? Yeah. So, so, but like uh, not to cut you off, but like uh, I'm, I'm, I have the lyric sheet here too, to like oh, okay. refresh my brain. But, um, cool. but like, you, you know, when it says, you know, when it says the dead walk, which is the obvious thing you would think like uh, about a zombie to me, I, I never even thought the word zombie never came in, into my mind because I, I don't know. I guess I just looked at it. Like he's saying something about like, 
current humanity of whenever this record came out, you know, like I, sure. I don't know. I just looked at it differently, I suppose, because also this was probably before the zombie phenomenon, you know, I mean, zombies obviously existed, but, um, and I was a big fan of like zombie movies and shit, but, um, I just looked at it more realistically, like, um, I don't know. I just looked at it differently, I suppose. So I'm tripping okay. out that you said zombies because I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? Um, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I read that somewhere and, and then I put, and then I read the lyrics and I was just like, yeah, I can see that. I can see where, where someone uh-huh. would kind of get that interpretation. But now, so totally. Like you, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like you were saying that you, you, so you've been the singer of bands. So I imagine that you've been writing the lyrics to, to the majority of the music that you've been the singer for. Right yeah uh, yeah if i'm if i'm this i mean the locust was interesting because the, the there were at different times um different singers but like the the, lo, the locust has a four piece with with um joey bobby and, and gabe what it was it, lyrically speaking it was split up a, amongst the three of us that sang so so like yeah um we so would that, each that would be approach us yeah but like we would each approach a song like this is you write this one and you write that one and I'll write this one. And so like you write the lyrics and then, and then they sing parts or backups or however you want to fucking call it. But like everyone sings on it, but like the, 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 the collaborative effort of writing lyrics with another person is, is bizarre and and can be very tricky. I've done that. And it's, um, I'm not, I, and I have, and I love all the stuff that I've been able to do with my my friends that I've collaborated lyrically with, but it, it is it is tricky. So it's cool when it's like just your words and you just write it and you fit it on the thing and that's it, you know. Sure. So um, yeah, right. Well, so so based on some of the context uh, from some of the bands that you've been in, um, you're no stranger to at to odd lyrical choices and context. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so like, what inspires you? What inspires your lyric writing? Like, what what do you look to, or or do you have an influence at all? Fuck yeah, I have influences. I mean, by default, when I first started singing this band and this band, Swing Kids, I think I was the um, I, I I consider myself the weak link of the band, like musically. I, I think I, I had no idea what I was doing. I, I had I didn't have a very good voice. I didn't know how to write lyrics, and the things that I wrote, I thought were um just kind of like like almost like naively written um and a lot of people will say to me that that band saved their lives and that and they they love that band so much and i and i really really appreciate that i i completely cannot agree or understand but i appreciate it and i don't mean to be a dick and i don't want to sound like a dick so it's hard for me to kind of um be acceptive of, of um complimenting that band uh lyrically right. yeah, sure. <laughs> um but I, but i but i remember like a huge influence was moss icon um they the singer would kind of like they had these big pieces of music and he would he would kind of like say the same phrase over and over and over and i and i that was definitely a thing that i thought about um so like in mm-hmm. swing kids i would just write like five lines or four whatever and just say it over and over and over there was it was almost like i only knew how to write a chorus i didn't know how to write a verse i, I really think right. that's my problem yeah. um, well you were a kid right i mean swing kids you were couldn't have been over 19 right i was 19 when it started and 20 when it ended or maybe yeah. 20 oh i turned 21 when it ended yeah so so it was pretty short yes yeah, so but i mean i should have yeah, but I should have been able to like do better. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think I think you're being hard on yourself, but I mean, like, because seriously, like, I I think about that those times in my life, and I'm just like, I was such a fucking idiot. You know, it's just like you can't help it. I mean, like, <laughs> we we're we're learning at that point like, how to be adults, you know, and it, with without any yeah. good guidance, and even still, like, what kind of fucking guidance can you really have to to teach you like how to be a decent singer when you're not like a you know hardcore punk band. Yeah. <laughs> um I just wish I looked at things and and took I wish I challenged myself m- more right earlier on, you know, okay. like um even now, I mean, I, even now when I record, I'll, I'll I'll do like something I work a lot with this um one of my bandmates who's also a producer, uh, Luke Henshaw, and he'll 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 he's a, he's very much from the world of hip hop and so he he throws in these strange to me um strange like elements like hey try this and i'm like what the fuck you know and it, he's like this is very much hip-hop like try this this is what mc would do and 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 so it's um that's a cool challenge for me so so like i just wish i 
because I was into hip hop as a child. I just wish I knew better. Like I wish I knew better to, mm. yeah, uh, with my with my stuff um, that I that I did earlier on. Okay, I think you're being hard on yourself because uh, I mean, like how <laughs> everyone, it, like you have the foresight. You have, I mean, you have this like uh, this looking back in hindsight. Now you have all this experience <clears throat> with you now of all of the shit that you've been able to do. And, you know, of course, you're going to look back at that time and be like, yo, I could have done it better. I mean, like we could all all of us could have done something better when we were 20. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I and I understand, like, you have to like I had to release, you know, or had to be in struggle and swing kids to get to the locust. I get or, you know, and the locust had to be the locust and to get to be the better locust. You know, I, I get all that stuff. Hmm. But a lot of I just. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting to think about that because it's kind of like now where where I feel like everyone okay, like yeah, it, maybe it was harder when I was 15 to actually put out a record. Now, people anyone can do whatever the fuck they want right away. They can record by themselves, they can record with no you know, you don't have to go to a studio and they can put it up online for the whole planet to hear. Right. Which is really really cool. But also, I feel like maybe everyone just thinks their shit's rad, and they and they, there's like a ton of stuff up there. And I'm like, fuck, man, maybe try a little bit harder. But that's I'm not gonna I'm not judging them. I'm let them do what they want. I, right. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. It's my opinion or whatever. But yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Like kind of. I, I mean, agree. like well, even like the phenomenon of, of like SoundCloud rap, which I guess isn't like that imp- a thing anymore. But like, remember when like that was happening? Mm-hmm. I kind of was like, wow, this is a trip. And and a, and a friend of mine, Brett Gerowitz, who who um, runs Anti Records that released uh, the Locust, um, he told me that he feels like it's like a modern day version of punk. And I and I was like, oh, that I see what I see that very very much. And then I felt like my parents because I would I would look at it objectively and be like, man, it just seems lazy. Like there's no real fucking riff, or there's like a janky you know melody and like this right. kind of mediocre vocal but then i was like fuck that's what i would do that's what i did as a kid you know so it made it made sense i guess it was just me being like an like an adult dick um Mm. yeah but like like i said you have all this foresight you have all this experience you know like um I, i think i would agree i think i agree with you like um also if it's like kids if it's like young kids or or you know more young people that are doing that stuff that are like you know just randomly putting shit up on soundcloud i mean what, what kind of resources do they have too? That's the other thing. Like I know that I see my kids use a tablet to use GarageBand, and like they don't have a single instrument to use. I mean, which is so crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, and, but they can yeah, make a song. Get, yeah. And but and that's like it's not impressive to me because I'm just like, yeah, you just grab some loops through them in the fucking you know on the screen and just kind of <laughs> cut and paste them together, and that's it. It's a song. It's just like yeah, yeah, that is totally lazy, and it's not really inspired in any way. But um, but it's a way for them to kind of you know, kind of wet their whistle of like this, what is, what is creativity? What is creation? How do I make something, you know? And then like you, you build from there and you're like, oh, well, if I, if I use dad's instruments now, I can go use his amps. I can go use his keyboards. I can go use his yep. guitars and shit. And, you know, totally. I can just do it myself, you know, and do it, do something different. So like our all... generations, our generation's launching point was way back there. So like right. this generation's launching points is like right here. So they're going to launch and then right. by the time they get to be 19 or 20, maybe they'll just be like writing the most righteous shit ever, you know? Could be. Yeah. Um, who knows, man? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are right now. If you think about it, there are yeah. people that are very young, just doing like the most um, innovative, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't like it or whatever, but like, it's, it's definitely innovative. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool that it's happening for people younger. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's rad. Good. I think yeah. so. The tools. Yep. Right. All right. Well, let's let's move on. Let's move on to the next song, "The Tower." <laughs> yeah, that that's a good one too because I I was I it's again like it, go, going from it's catching up to the tower was that shift where I was like, mm-hmm. oh damn man, the vibe changed so drastically. Um, right. lyrically, I have no fucking idea what they were talking about. Um, yeah, but like neither. I was really yeah, but I was really into the song. I thought it was a great a great shift. Um, great first two tracks which i think is important also when you're you're sequencing a record is oh, yeah. opening track obviously but opening and, tr- and closing are always important and for me like and then the splits on a, on vinyl is really important like side a and side b but like 
track two is so important. You want to get, you, you get them and then you, and then you keep, you have to keep them there. And, right. it, and that shift really, they nailed it. Um, it. It kept me there. I remember just fucking standing there the whole time. Right. <laughs> yeah. That That's was awesome. good. Yeah. All right. Well, so the Shit. tower, like, like you said, I, I honestly, I didn't really understand what he, what they were saying lyrically, but yeah. uh, I did find out um, you, you don't have to be like a mystic at all. Right. You do, you, do you dig tarot cards at all? Um, I, I don't not dig them. I don't, I think that they're interesting and I, and I appreciate yeah. them. I'll, I'll just say that. Okay. So yeah. We're, yeah. Cause, um, it happened to be that like the day I was listening to this, my, my wife likes tarot's, you know, she does like her own readings at home and shit. And so she, she had done, done something with the tower card. Wow. So okay. I, I looked into the tower and actually the tower is a symbol for the ambition that is constructed on faulty premises. Uh, the deconstruction of the tower must happen in order to clear out the old ways and welcome something new. Because the depiction on the card, it's the the tower is being struck by lightning and fucking people are jumping for their lives from it yeah. and it's being yeah. destroyed. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's revelations can come in a flash of truth or inspiration is also what is uh, kind of describes that card. Um, Dude, it's all about their lyrics. That's so crazy. Right. So I'm wondering if they actually got the inspiration from tarot. Like from a tarot card wow. for that song. Yeah. Maybe they did. I yeah, really yeah. would wonder. Yeah. It's wild. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know anything about these dudes. That's the thing. It's just like I couldn't find yeah. anything, <laughs> any information, but I was just like, okay, well, yeah. based on what these lyrics are saying and what I know the, this tarot, tarot card deck to mean, they actually do yeah. sound kind of uh, inter intertwined. That's cool. Yeah. I hope I hope that I hope that's where they got it from. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, if I can ever talk to Rob Wright at some point, maybe I'll ask him. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. But for you, can you can you think of a situation where you had a flash of truth or inspiration? Oh, every day. Yeah, something like that happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because because uh, like the the card specifically kind of like depicts a moment, like a like a an intense moment of chaos. You know, because it's like like what they say here in the description about, you know, this uh, a symbol of ambition that is constructed on faulty premises, faulty premises, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so it's like a situation where you had a flash of truth or inspiration. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, like truth and inspiration can come to you uh, in different in different ways or or you can harness it like a good example, mm -hmm. I think maybe. Well, let me let me try to think about this for a second. Um, the truth and inspiration thing's weird, but just off the last, I'll just riff off the last couple of days of 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 my life. So, sure. um, I have this project called Satanic Planet. We played in Salem, or we played in Boston the other night at this thing called Satan Con, and um, Reggie Watts was there. Um, and I really wasn't that familiar with Reggie Watts. Everyone's like, "Oh my God, he's here! He's here! That's crazy!" At the convention. <clears throat> so our drummer or someone asked if he would um if he would if he would open for us and he's a he's a big deal you know and so he yeah. um came and did a, and did a set uh, a, a, a short set before we before we played and i was fully inspired by him and i was like oh my gosh I, I, his his set you know was um 100 percent um, it spoke to me like from the start to the finish, it, it like had all of the, all of the dynamic that I am al already like, uh, tuned into. And I was like, this guy's brilliant. Right. I fucking it's, love this all shit. improvised, right. All improvised. Like, no. uh, I mean, like I think words. he had like, sure. I think he had some of it. I'm sure. I mean, it's like, you know, even like, cause I think, it, you know, I, musically or, or com comedically, I think he might've had like some of it already sorted out. I don't know. I didn't get to talk to him about it. But right. like even an example was like he did this. It, there was a break and he did this like call and response and he he would like say a little phrase in the band and then the audience would say it and then he'd you'd do it again and then and then he would like kind of like and then he just like went off for like thirty seconds on this fucking insane non linear uh, like thing and the and the audience is like going okay how the fuck are we gonna say this like as a call and response <laughs> and I was like oh my god that's brilliant that's fucking brilliant so yeah. there you know. Um, Truth, I don't know. Inspiration, definitely. You know, so there's that, and that, and that came to me, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so good. Like, I, I really 
am inspired by like what he did with his audience engagement. Cause I do struggle with trying to find like a cool means to engage with the audience. I prefer not to uh, for many reasons, I think, cause over the years, the locust was like, you know, just like rudely abused by the audience, like heckling us. And I was like, oh, fuck these people. I'm not going oh, right. to, we're not going to yeah. allow them to talk. So we, we didn't let people talk. So now I, I struggle, but um, so anyhow, then last night, Def Club played a show and it was also <clears throat> the one year anniversary of Gabe Serbian um, passing. So oh, right. um, I I took it, it, we were opening. So Def Club was, was opening last night for, uh, we were support for uh, this band Seisha. And I, and I, I was kind of tripping out because they're like a nineties band. Um, and there were all these really young people there. So I, I don't know how all that stuff happens. Um Good for them, I for for sure. Um, but I was mm-hmm. I was gonna say, I you know the band and Def Club, everybody um, is is um, Gabe Gabe's a big thing for all of us, you know, uh, entity uh, in this. And so I, I was gonna dedicate our set to them, uh, to him, um, and and say it, you know, to the crowd. And so I, I said, um, on, in the break, um, in one of my the very few times I have dialogue with the audience, like this set is going to go to Gabe Serbian. It's one year that he passed away. And the whole crowd was like applauding and cheering. And there was something. And I, and I, and I want to know, like, I would have loved to know, like, do you guys all know who Gabe is? Are you just saying, are you just applauding that, like that I'm speaking? Cause I, I, I don't know if they know who he is, you know, right. should, yeah. but I, I don't know. Um, well, it's it, nice it to was, know that um, the audience is going to at least be respectful. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was definitely a, it was definitely, uh, a respectful audience. Um, right. Um, so it was cool to harness that energy because I think even for ourselves, like just acknowledging it vocally, verbally, like, Hey, we're doing this. It's for Gabe. He's with us on this stage. His energy is here. And it made it fucking intense times a thousand for us. Right. And I think, I think it's reciprocated by the audience. There's this exchange of energy, you know? So, so, if they do or don't know about Gabe, even me speaking that, I think, and us acting the way we did and the people that do know about Gabe, maybe it just made everything kind of, it's like going back to getting your tarot read, you know, it just made it gnarlier and like in a cool right. way, you know, it made right. it like, it showed our love for Gabe and, you know, his energy in this world. And and I think that was cool. So, mm. so it's um, in a long you know, drawn out way. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe I'm answering your question. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's fine, man. I mean, I, I hear you. And, yeah. and I, I did realize that it was the anniversary uh, of his passing because it was really, uh, I, I didn't, I never got to meet Gabe. Um, but, you know, I obviously, obviously know people that knew him and the, the night he passed away where we were actually in Providence and I saw so many people that knew him. I was less like, I was with like Steve and Eric Paul, like we were all yeah. at a show downtown and we were all having a good time. And then it was just like the next, the following morning, it was just like when that bomb hit. And let's just like all of a sudden, there was all of these postings about Gabe and how he had passed. And I was just like, holy fuck. This is like, and I can only, I could only feel so bad for everybody because I just knew how all of them were, were feeling. And it was just like, it was so weird for, to go from this like intense gathering where we were all kind of hanging out and having a great time to like the following day being like, oh, we've just lost like one of our own, you know? And mm. so I'm, I'm really sorry for, for your loss. And I'm, mm. Sorry that that happened. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I, I think it's, um, it was fucking crazy to see how massive that guy is. And, and I, I knew it for myself, but like on this planet, it, it just reached everywhere right away. And I was, I was just, I couldn't believe it. I really, it was such an eye opening, uh, interesting thing. And I, and I wish with all of my heart that he could have known that, prior to him leaving um but maybe he does right. know it i don't know uh we're a pretty naive species of um you know on, uh, living creatures on this planet so so maybe um yeah, yeah. maybe he knows maybe he I has a, so. an understanding now that of how much he, <laughs> yeah. he was appreciated yeah i don't know i don't know humans are so weird we just only use a portion of our brains and we act like assholes on this planet which is probably part of the reason why the why Gabe had to bail because I fucking can totally understand fe- being fed up with everything. So, yeah, yeah. no, I know, man. I, I hear you. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's keep on moving on. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, Brainless Wonder is next, but I wanted to skip it because I didn't mm-hmm. have anything for it. Um, yep, yep. I you know what's funny, it. though? Because, okay, I, I want you to skip it for sure, but I do think that that song was weird because it was, it really felt like, um, I mean, even the lyrics are just so brief. It, right, it like seemed lines, almost right? like it in. It seems like an interlude, and I, and that that was a, a, a artistically that thing like that like that thing stuck with me because that that definitely shows up a lot in like specifically like locust stuff or a lot of things that I that I've done or been part of. So True. yeah, let's skip on, let's move on. But like that that song's an interesting track. Right, it's like what some people might consider a throwaway track, but it's like it actually yeah. in the composition of the of the sequencing of the record, it's like it has a kind of important part. Totally. It gives you, it's a bridge to the next piece, you know, right. because now like I think with digital stuff, everything's so disjointed. I think mm. what, for me, I want to, I want the album to go from start to finish as one massive thing, you know? So right, right. I don't know. That's how I looked at it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, well, that's because you're a vinyl enthusiast, you know, obviously. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. That's, it's different. Yeah. Very different. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So tired of waiting. So, um, this song, I mean, kind of seemed kind of straight, fairly straightforward. Um, and yeah. I was just curious, like, is this a similar sentiment to what you felt when you decided to go uh, on your on your first tour with your first band when you were fifteen? <laughs> uh, no, because this is one thing I'm learning now. I mean, I'm, I'm 47, so I learned this like that time happens faster. So, so back then, when you're 15, time went so much slower but i i wasn't i never was like i don't think i can relate to the lyrics for sure of this song but um um you know i think um i don't know it's so weird it just the opportunity was there mm-hmm. to do stuff and and i and i think maybe it's part part like most people maybe at age 15 wouldn't want to do it or weren't allowed to do it. I mean, fuck the second tour I went on was I went on, jo- I joined a band called brain tornado because me and the, the bass player of the band, I wasn't even the bass player of the band. I, I filled in for him because he was also 15 and his mom wouldn't let him go, but my mom would let me go. So I went on tour, you know? So like, yeah. Um, I think that's, a, yeah, it wasn't that I was tired of waiting or anything. I just was like, I'm ready. Let's do, I'm ready to go. You know, like the opportunity was like in my face and I, and I, it worked. Um, Hmm. yeah in retrospect it's like seems insane that i was i mean by the time i turned 16 and went on tour i fucking had toured three countries you know i toured the whole continent jesus from mexico to canada uh and that's that seems wild for someone at the age of 16 to do without a legal guardian there was nobody that was over 18 and you know it just seems seems like a bad idea um so um Tired of waiting? No, I, I totally was not tired of waiting. <laughs> right, <laughs> you, know? you were just you were just hungry for it, and it just kind of presented itself to you. You just took the opportunity. It was just there, yeah. Right. But I do like that song. It's it's a good song for sure. It is good. It's a great one. I can I can relate to it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I feel like yeah, I definitely well, right. can relate to it now. That, that might actually <laughs> uh, lead into the next song, stock taking. So, because this one I feel has a. Seemingly similar context um, as Tired of Waiting, but the lyrics, uh, here are sample lyrics. Uh, quote, are you sick and tired of the same old thing, or are you happy enough? Tell me, when does so much become so little? When does yeah. too little become too much? Those are such an insane, uh, you know, um, existentialist kind of question. That, yeah. And even like acknowledging existentialism, I, I got a book on it because I would, I, 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 some, at some point that was brought up to me. And I remember being, you know, 15 years old and in, in, in high school, I think, what was I in like t- 10th grade or something and doing a report on a book on existentialism. And I think my teacher was like, you're insane. And I was like, I don't know, like, I'm trying to figure this shit out. Life is really <laughs> weird. Um, so yeah. I like those questions. Yeah, that those definitely made. I, I remember like hearing that and thinking about that stuff. You know, like what what are we grateful for as human beings? I still think about it. You know, like mm-hmm. fuck, I'm taking all this shit for granted. You know. Yeah. Um, well, it makes me think about your workaholic habits. It's like, but do, I don't do you... want to call it workaholic. It's just like well, I had the time. I, I mean, I, I it's there. I can do it. I should do it. You know, not like I'm because right. you, the term workaholic means like you're trying to make money right you know like work is like is like money 
or to well, me like your career yeah i yeah. just think like i want to create something i just want to make something and and like i can either like i can either go to the studio and work on a new thing or or sit on my computer and write a book or or, or do whatever or right. i could just binge watch some fucking tv show on netflix and like that doesn't really i mean that's fine right for whoever or fine for me but like i'd rather just do something cooler or yeah. or go like i just i guess i just look at like my time differently right right yeah. well so i mean that's kind of what i was getting at like do you ever do you ever think in these terms either are you happy enough with what you've carved out for yourself or do you feel like maybe you still don't have enough yeah i think about that every day for sure because yeah. i also too trip out because man it's weird um it's always like brought to me so i think a lot of the downfall of humanity is due to capitalism and it's strange to function in a in a capitalistic country or, or world or whatever you want to call it <clears throat> and so i do think about that stuff and so even like at an early age you know i remember playing music and 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 like having my uncle you know ask me like um you know assuming that i was like a big deal or whatever. I don't know what a big deal is, but he was like, why aren't you on MTV? And I'm like, look what the fucking, sh look at the shit I'm doing, dude. Like, of course it's not an MTV. And then he's, his, you know, like, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I use his like, um, sort of like, um, I don't know, like, get like gauge of what is successful. You know, are you making money? Mm -hmm. uh you're in a, you're in a band are you making money are you popular Do, you know are you, you are you like getting girls and i'm like okay i'm just gonna explain this like i'm in a band called the locust who wear uniforms all three of those things are t totally not happening you know because like people fucking hate our band or think we're garbage or don't understand it so that so like the ones that do like it like it but the ones that don't like it definitely don't like it and that's cool he didn't understand that you know i was like it's when you when you make a, when you create something, if they do like it or don't like it, that's fine. When they're apathetic and indifferent, then you're failing. Right. So there's that, and there's like, you know, the girls thing was like, come on, we're not Molly Crew or whatever. Fucking, you know, we're not Van Halen, and like, look at us, dude. And like, also, right. like, that's not our goal. We don't do. We, that's not our like. That's not our goal. Right. So, and that's also like talking just like. Uh, gen a generational thing a, a, a generation older man from arizona like of course he's gonna fucking think that you know and so there's oh, that yeah. and then yeah. there's the the money thing and it's like how do i explain to him like okay this is at a time where like the locusts would go on tour and we would um be offered like a full tour with the yeah yeahs or phantom Oss or dillinger escape plan and we would say like oh we we can't do these dates here 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 and here like a third of the tour because they're they're clear channel shows and we're boycotting clear channel because Clear Channel supports the U.S. war in Iraq, and they're ejecting artists from their venues for speaking out against war, and the Bush administration is using it for their advertisements. So fuck Clear Channel, no. And then, so I'm trying to explain to my uncle, like, we lost all this money because of this shit. Money's not our objective. And he's just like, what? Right. You know, so so that that's the thing that it's, like, weird for me to, like, figure out, like, right. the importance of, of what we're doing. And, and do you have too much or too little or, like, the wealth and I'll use like air quotes, like the wealth is from other things that we don't place on a monetary thing in a capitalistic sure. world. You know, like, the wealth like is the, all the triumph things. of actually making a great record and going on a successful or not successful in, in the, yeah. in the, in the <clears throat> financial uh, sense, but in, in, in you for your own gratifying, your own gratitude, right? It's gratifying sure. to you to be able for to sure. go on tour with Def Club or uh, Dead Cross and yeah. just, enjoy being on tour like whether no one came or not it would be like oh i get to do this yeah so successful is a good word too because like i'll i'll come back from tour and be like success we didn't die you know and like, <laughs> like that that's i mean and that, that's like the that's the very bottom of, of where right. of your gratitude that's like you where do you go below that like you die you know so like fuck right. we didn't die yeah did you lose money i mean did you have a lot of tr tr trouble, you know, did you, did you get sick? You know, I don't know. All these things could have happened, but did you meet people? Did you see rad things? Because a lot of people will be like, well, you get to travel the world right. and I fucking get to travel the world. And that's so rad, but there's always a, but right. Because yeah. like I get to see the inside of venues everywhere for like hours and hours and hours, like doing sound check and not. Be so like, I, I, I look at it like 
I am so grateful that I have one or maybe two hours a day between soundcheck and, and showtime to go experience like whatever the perimeter of that, that venue is, you know, in that city. And that's cool because right, most people right. don't get to do that. And so they're, so they're, yeah, success yeah, being there at is all, definitely yeah. there. Right. Being there at all kind of yeah. seems like an extravagance that none, none other people would kind of get, you know? So even though yeah, like, and also like, like looking at a at a green room for hours, I mean, yeah, I, I understand that that's not as glor glorious as if people think it's it is. Yeah, and that's, it's also getting better now. You have GPS, you know, it's like oh, I can go do these things. Like I think about people that come to San Diego, like that just show up and play, <clears throat> you know, a random dive bar, and like don't <clears throat> know where the best food is, where the where the cool record stores are, or right. like how to get to you know. Uh, like cool nature, like sunset cliffs or to see the sea lions in La Jolla or like, I don't know, or like how, I don't know if people can do that now they can, mm -hmm. but in the back of the day, they couldn't. And me, with me too, it's like, I would get to the show and be like, all right, on foot, I'm going to just go that way and like, hope I don't get lost and hope I find something cool in my time and, right. and, and set my standards low and be happy with like, just finding like food or tea or whatever. Um, right. Um, but now it's a lot easier. So yeah, I guess, I guess success is a, is a, is a, is a, is a strange word to use, but it is a very, um, so yeah, going back to the song, like too little, too much is a really good point because I, I definitely understand like being grateful and, um, appreciative of the things that, that, that I have in, in my, in my life. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's great, man. Um, moving on to the next song. Uh, I was actually going to skip the end of all things. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Again. You might as well skip Big Dick too, because that song's kind of dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was going to uh, say, what, what can I, what I, what can I really say about a song called Big Dick? <laughs> you know? I mean, were you going to skip that too? Uh, I was. I mean, it only reminds me yeah, of like I one yeah, thing. Yeah. I I don't like the funkiness of that song. I was always like turned off by that. You know, I, was I, like, I figured you might. Yeah. Yeah, and also like. I just didn't want to really hear about it. Like big dick. It just sounds weird, but I get it. I think it's like a jokey thing. I, I, I I'm assuming I get what he's like. Um, I think I get what he's doing, you know? Yeah. Like, I think it's, it's, I think it's a tongue in cheek type of song. It's, it's kind of like yeah. poking fun at uh, toxic, toxic masculinity. It's not yeah, really yeah, like, yeah. But, like, Hey, I got a big dick. You know, it's not like that at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, and that's cool. I get it. Um, and, it, and, and, and I thought about that, especially not to keep because we should move on from the song, but but that idea, like thinking about toxic toxic masculinity, was really um, <clears throat> without me even understanding that term, was really really important as uh, from the day from day one being in in bands because I was really opposed to playing music and punk and hardcore that seemed like a bunch of white males. Like I was like fuck this shit. I want to appeal to other people. I want to appeal to people of color. I want to appeal to to women i want to appeal to, to to the queer kids you know i want it i don't want it to be like that so so a song like big dick uh met the, the the concept of it, it it definitely resonated musically it did not so there's mm -hmm. that okay yeah no i agree with that um so unfortunately like going through the second half of the record um there wasn't very much else for me to go on. I was just like, Jesus Christ, what what do I have to work with here? Like, there's nothing that I found out about any of these songs. Uh, two lips, two lungs, and one tongue. I found yeah. out was covered by Alkaline Trio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? That's yeah. impressive. I guess that they picked up on that. Do you like that band? Uh, do you know them? I know them. I don't. I mean, I I don't want to say like I don't like them. And like I'm saying they're bad. I just it just not a, not a fan of them. And music. I'm sure they're great. Yeah, I mean, I just it just never got. I never like got on got into it. Right. I did. I was too too busy. I guess. Right. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, I mean, it, what's uh what is like a a cover that you know about that's always kind of like rubbed you wrong? Mm, oh. Okay. Uh. Fuck. I'm I'm gonna throw a friend of mine under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> one that one that rubbed me wrong would be Slayer covering covering Minor Threat. I think it's fucking super lame. And they changed the wow. lyrics and made it racist. And Ian was pissed, rightfully so. Um, yeah. Huh. Eh, yeah. I I love Dave and I love Slayer. Um, Dave's my 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 family. You know, I he's he, he's my bandmate. I love him to death. Right. Um, I do wonder about some of uh, certain members of the bands like. Uh, 
uh, beliefs, <laughs> political, political. Yeah. 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 I wonder why they changed the lyrics to that. Yeah. Huh. Um, okay. I yeah, mean, I minor, threat is, minor threat is minor threat. Yeah, <clears throat> Minor Threat's an interesting band because as a kid, I thought they were fucking skinheads, uh, you know, and then I saw that song title, um, Guilty of Being White, and I was like, fuck, man, they are like a skinhead band, and they're completely 100% opposite, obviously. Uh, it took me a minute, so I could see why maybe <clears throat> Carrie King or Tom Araya, I don't know who who was behind changing the lyrics to that, just couldn't pick up on the obviousness of minor threat, but they did, they did what they did. So yeah, that rubs me the wrong way. With that being said, <clears throat> there's a lot of covers that rub me the wrong way, but there's also a lot of covers that rub me the right way. <laughs> so yeah, sure. it's, it's, the... was there, was there a song you can think of that you didn't know was a cover that you like? Probably. You probably um, don't know but... it's a cover. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Re, 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 or, or it took me a minute to like read the, um, the liner notes to figure it out right <laughs> a good example i guess would be the cramps because i was really obsessed with that band and a lot and almost all their songs were covers you know and so oh, it was yeah. i did i used to do a weird deep dive at, at the tower records that was by my house that had right that like i was so lucky that they had this like weird i don't even know what section it was called it was it was like import or maybe it was maybe it's called rockabilly i don't know what it's called but it like it just had all the bizarre shit that the cramps were, were like covering or ripping off so I could buy these records based off of the same tr titles of the songs, assuming that those are the original songwriters of, of like what I thought were cramp songs. So like, mm. yeah, that, that's it. That was it. also to our three, one G released a, a cramps tribute record. And it was funny because I had to make a list of what was actually cramp songs and not cramp songs for the artist. When I asked them to be on the, oh, the record, yeah. like, Right. They, some of them would pick tracks. I'm like, that's not, that's, that's a cover. You can't cover a cover, you know, like, right. So, <laughs> okay. That, that did come up. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, so, um, like I said, not much else to say about any of these other songs, uh, rags and bones. Um, mm -hmm. oh, no, I like Bruno. the rags and bones was great too, because it had like, it had such nice melody in it. It, it was, it was, it was a shift from like, weird and obscure and mm -hmm. uh, abrasive or whatever you want to call it. Rags and Bones has that, has that chorus that was just um, very melodic and very, and it very catchy. So it was, it was a nice, um, because, you know, you're, you're kind of like hit and you're like, Oh, this is fucked up and weird. And the whole thing, the record's going, you know, and then you kind of, right. when you get to Rags and Bones, there's this part where it's kind of like, you're on, you're on fucking cruise control. Like, yeah, this is rad right on. This is cool. Like, yeah, I've been abused. <laughs> I've been abused, you know, sonically or, or like your brain has been like, ah, like taking all this information, right. like, rags and bones. We're like, we got this. So that yeah. Was cool. Yeah. They're, they're, like the second side does actually seem to have a little bit more of like a pop sensibility. Totally. Yeah. Right. Like, so like that's, that's the thing about this band is that they're like, that I noticed at least on this record is that they have a pop sensibility. They have ability to kind of like create, uh hooks and melodies it's not all just like abrasive it's not like kind of like really crazy noise rock i mean it is to a degree when you like you know listen to like the bass and the drums it's just like it's so just driving and like maniacal but at the same yeah. time <laughs> yeah. like i i guess it's probably the last song all lies it has like that that female kind of uh, uh, so good that female harmony going on in the chorus yeah. i think right yeah and they do they have someone sang on it right um I think so. I mean, I think it's a woman. I don't. I. I actually don't have the. I never got the liner notes, so I didn't know who was doing it. God damn! I can't fucking see. I don't think I'm on my glasses here. Let me see if I can read this. Um. Uh, no, 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 no. Um. Oh yeah, special guest vo vocalist at the end of all things. Oh. Oh, at um, the end of all sung, things, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, sung by Danielle. Uh, um, Ga Gagnier. Okay. Um, and there's someone there's, and then they, they, they think they're live person, live sound. And then there's bells. I don't know what that means. Um, so yeah, um, it's not on all eyes. Um, okay. It's the end of all things, but even yes. still, so it's like, yeah, there, there is some stuff in this album that kind of breaks it up and kind of like, they, they have a sensibility. It's not, it's not just yeah. crazy punk. Which but totally goes back to like alternative tentacles, because if you think about it, and no offense to bands like Minor Threat or Black Flag or something, but like I remember being a kid and like discovering um, Dead Kennedys and being like, "Whoa, these motherfuckers like know how to how to play, you know, their instruments." Like, 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 you know, they're 
like they're trained i think i think you know like uh yeah. in ja- like they can play like jazz <laughs> you know like i don't know it seems like that's i think you have to be like a, a step above sure. the ramones to play jazz you know right yeah um comparing comparing so, yeah comparatively like you know ramones to, to dead kennedys it's just like yeah the like these guys seem like they may have taken lessons and these guys just look like they just picked up instruments <laughs> Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. I mean, a lot of punk but, is like that, and that and that's great. It actually kind totally. of makes for great music sometimes. That kind of like uninformed ability to just go crazy and then just you know be as creative as you can with something that you don't even know how to use. But so getting back to the to the last song, "All Lies." Um, yeah. So now I feel like this is a big closer. Now you know, like you were saying, the last song on a record is is totally relevant. It's very important, and I think that this yes. song is. Um, I could not figure it out lyrically. Like, I can't tell exactly what he means. Obviously, you know, something about lies, obviously that there's a betrayal. Uh, it feels more per- personal in this song mm. than it does, like, external. Um, it does seem to lean a little bit into, like, a religious kind of tip, but not, mm. but not overtly. It's just, I think it's like what you were saying, how there is a, there's a nuance to the, the lyrics where you can kind of reinterpret however you want. I mean, because there's a lot of mention of prayer in it, right? To to like um I forget the exact words, but you know, yeah. so that would be that would be like maybe too direct yeah. for them to say. Well, he like, says, oh, and I say pray to me, pray to me. Yeah, of course. Right, right. It's like the obvious. It's the obvious. Right. It is obvious. But I, but... I mean I that's crazy because like I, I I'm a, I'm atheist, um, but I sing a lot about God, um, but not like praising him. Yeah, and I talk and I sing about prayer as well, and and um, I don't know, it's weird, it's very very weird. I don't sing about God like he or it really exists. I I just sing about it as a metaphor for like how fucking humans are narrating this their time on this planet with this thing that mm. doesn't exist seemingly doesn't exist um yeah so i it's it's weird because i do think that all lies as a little as like very it's very somber in 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 a in a, in a sense and compared to even the opening track or even maybe like big dick or whatever like it just seems like it just has like a little bit more like a little bit it's a little bit bluer you know and yeah. i and i and i think that's cool to kind of just like let you go here you go you know and think about it because i right. as a kid i remember listening to that and just being like what the fuck like it, it just it like lets you kind of it just like sets you down and be like here you go enjoy your the rest of your day and f- <laughs> figure out everything you know <laughs> like, right yeah you know yeah it's yeah. uh yeah it's not a really like a like a like a tidy little bow on the the end of this package you know it's it's mm-hmm. almost more perplexing being like how, like how they end it with this song which is so epic it's like the longest song it's see like mm-hmm. it's it's got like all of these like it's like a really well constructed song and it is blue it's like it is somber kind of yeah. um and and you know and it, it leads me to believe like there might be some leaning on religion in here a little bit you know like obviously i don't think that the the wright brothers are, are religious people and i don't think that they uh believe in any kind of sense uh at least not kind of your typical christianity <clears throat> but um but with that being said I, I i do have to ask well what is your connection to to satanism because what i understand of it i know i've heard lydia lunch talk about this like it's not what people think <laughs> of it right like like it's 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 I mean, it's it's a kind of a, a formalized religion, I guess, but it's not like what people think of as like you know all the pentagrams and like lighting fucking mm. candles or whatever, and it's like you mm-hmm. know like mm-hmm. learning fucking witchcraft or some whatever some whatever bullshit, mm. right? Uh, good question. Well, for one, let me real quick before we dive into that. That's cool, but I I think uh, for me, I don't know. And again, I'm 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 speculating with no means no, but I we live in the you know Western culture, so I feel like there's no way we cannot address religious um context you know no matter how we fit into things but you know even (laughs) you know here this is a good example like like this back cover 
Hmm. They clearly are not religious, <laughs> uh, or at least, or at least respecting religion. You know, uh, right. uh, you know, he's smoking. He's, he looks like a fucking asshole when he's wearing a priest uh, asshole in a cool right. way, wearing a priest a priest outfit. Um, right. It looks like se- semi okay. like Nazi ish with that like that hat and then the glasses and then but then wearing yeah, the, well, the I, priest thing. Okay, so I I see the Nazi thing. For me, I take the the like the leather cap and the glasses as like sort of like a leather daddy. I think thing sure. maybe, right. but you know, the, the cigarette kind of just like loosely hanging has a, has a sense of arrogance. I don't know. It's a, it's a fucking great back cover. I mean, I was, yeah. it, it's a really good in context to this, you know, like, right. There you go. You have both, like both covers are amazing. And right. we can keep riffing on this, but even like the, 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 the title backwards is uh, right. It's a fucking brilliant layout. And it, it worked. It caught my attention 100 million percent, but, um, my relationship with Satanism. Good question. So, um, I mean, obviously I grew up, you know, liking Slayer and, and, and I liked, I was obsessed with, even when Motley Crue put out Shout the Devil, I, I bought that record. I think that's a fantastic record. I, and I, um, uh, I should, I should grab, oh, I won't grab it, but, um, the cover is black on black. It's black with a uh, spot gloss of a pentagram, the Motley Crue record. Right. And I was obsessed with that. And I was like, oh my gosh. So satanic planet, when we put out our record, it's black with, with spot gloss, same thing, um, that, that mm-hmm. they did. Um, I don't think Motley Crue was really satanic, but, um, m- my relationship with it was like, it's cool. It's cool. Like it's the, in, it's the, um, antithesis of, of God, I guess, or the, 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 the opposite of God and to some, in some way, maybe, maybe I shouldn't even have say that. Cause maybe it's not, it's, it's just the other side of the spectrum. But, um, my current relationship with it was like, I went and saw that movie, hail Satan with a question mark. Um, the documentary, which I think is a brilliant film. I, I went and saw it on a whim and I was like, dude, I should totally join the satanic temple. This shit's so rad. I, I really, really think this is awesome. I don't believe in God. I'm, I'm an atheist. Um, I really want to join it. And then I think maybe I said something online or something. And I was like, Oh, I love this movie. It's great. And someone's like, yo, you should look at this thing. Lucian Greaves, the, the co-founder of the temple did this thing and mentions dead cross. <clears throat> and then I was like, Oh, that's so, so cool. And then somehow I was like, you guys should talk. And then we talked and then he was on my podcast and um, when Luke and I, uh, who my, my podcast host and also is in Planet B, we went to do the podcast with Lucian and we, and we, in the back of our heads, we had this idea because in his studio, and I also have the record too, but in his studio on the wall, there's the um, Anton LaVey Satanic Mass record, which I think is a really brilliant record. It's very funny sounding and campy and organy, and it's not really oh, yeah. satanic. It just has a cool cover and it sounds like circus music. And I was right. like, we should do a Satanic Mass record with Lucian but like have him kind of say, cause you know, that there's the church of Satan, which is campy and, and it is its thing and theaters and authoritarianism and, and kind of, uh, there's a lot of problems with Anton LaVey's um, world of Satanism. But when I discovered the Satanic temple, I was like, Oh man, there's this element of activism and, and, and social justice and, and, and the fight for religious freedom and, and, it seemed um, ex- all inclusive instead of exclusive. Uh, all inclusive instead of exclusive. Yeah. So it was um, something that I was really drawn to, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool. Let's do a record with him, and he can maybe narrate some some sort of like dialogue about what like uh, the Satanic Temple preaches about or their mm-hmm. their their tenets." And then it be and then it kind of turned into a and so we did it we did a band and it kind of became a band uh, it, it, be, it right away it became a band but ke- became more of like a musical thing not necessarily like this in my mind it was going to be very one dimensional like almost like noise or or soundscapes with with dialogue and now it's like a band band but um I mean and then diving into it like becoming close friends with Lucian and working with TST a lot um, really made me have a different perspective of things and it. My my relationship with Satanism isn't like a, a the sort of like hokey you know character of of this you know kind of like half horned humanoid thing. Right. It's just kind of like um, the I for me my relationship with it is it's it's a it's a it's a very um, relevant vessel to combat 
um, religious fundamentalism and, and religious oppression. And, and especially if you look up, you know, if you look into TST stuff, like their reproductive rights campaign is a huge thing that, uh, that like resonates with me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just how they're very um, open to accepting people, um, LGBTQ to LGBTQ plus community, these are things that I think are really great. I, I get that there are, there are other denominations, uh, Christian specifically churches that are gay and open to LGBTQ plus stuff. But this it's like now it is a fucking battleground for women's reproductive rights and gender identity and gender equality. And I mm-hmm. think that that's a, um, a thing, but I grew up like hating um god the concept of god and and christianity because i i saw that it was oppressive towards women and towards um queer my queer friends and i i just thought like this is something that i i want to um fight against um right and i think that's i think that's a i think that's a problem that i find with religion religion's always like pointing at you like you're fucking doing this wrong but while they're pointing at you, there's all these other fingers pointing back at them. So they're just, they're just full of shit. And I realized that early on, you know, but I was really grateful that my parents didn't push religion on me too. So I was able to just be like, yo, my Christian friends are fucked. Like I got, I'm fine. I'm going to just get into like skateboarding and and, like punk rock and do my thing. But yeah. Just kind of tune it out for the most part as a young kid. Right. Kind of, but, but I, but I, but being able to kind of like look at it in a, in a, in, in a peripheral, you know, way helped me kind of just be like yo this is bad shit that's like really really infiltrating like every facet of 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 life you know right. um <clears throat> yeah and, and and i remember like even in, like it going go, also too like um with the satanic temple i can't really find like a thing to be like oh i'm 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 against what you guys are standing for i can't find that where like I remember there was a huge shift in nineties hardcore where there was like Krishna was happening all the time. And mm. I was like, and, and, and like at first you're like, cool. It seems like peaceful. It seems like, um, you know, they're like, they're into vegetarianism. That's cool. That was my introduction to Krishna. It was like, I could go eat vegetarian food. Now it's easy. But back then it was really, it was a little bit harder, but then I started realizing like, Whoa, man, they have this like weird hierarchical struggle structure where it's like men, cows, and then women, like that seems fucked. Um, mm-hmm. Right. You know, and then, and then, and then just see, like, and then, and then just like, so like kind of hating Krishna and then like having shelter come and be like that, that band was from youth, people from youth today, like shelter. And then they're like capitalist, you know, and I'm like, this is fucking dumb, dude. Krishna's stupid. So there's that, you know, but I, yeah, I could, I could go on and, and like pick out whatever, but, but yeah. um, I mean, there's dumb Satanist out there. There's totally fucking dumb bullshit satanist but like i think the satanic temple is something i definitely um i'm part of it you know i am a member of a card carrying member now i had to because i joined i started that band but um i but i stand i stand yeah. by the um by tst yeah i think yeah. they're i think they're doing a lot of really good work for um for people on this planet and their their legal battles alone speak volumes so yeah right yeah they're very kind of like true righteous like uh they have like no uh no like preconceptions or anything kind of like what what you see in other religions where it's just like hey fill up our donation bin you know and it's just like you know <laughs> god knows what they do with that you know and all this yeah. other like bullshit yeah. that that we hear about that that goes on in the in the church yeah and, and i also i mean fuck if anyone goes on and, and argues with tucker carlson on fox like i i'll, I'll probably back them you know yeah. like so that's that's it's good with me <laughs> all right well so in closing i mean uh, i guess i'd like to ask you a little bit about like what you have coming up um obviously the the doc is out now or at least it's kind of in a in a it's not in a they're not doing a theatrical release their turnstile films is releasing the doc uh don't fall in love with yourself and are they still asking or looking to people to host uh, showings in their in their cities mm. is that how it's yeah working? so screen yeah, there's a bunch of screenings. They're kind of I, I I have like uh I, we've I guess touched upon it. Like my schedule's insane, so I'm like I don't know what's going on, but they do know more. But there's screenings in different places, um, and um, I was just at one in New York. It was awesome. It was very very fun. And Planet B played. It was it, it was a good. It was a really cool thing. But there's some in there's a bunch in Texas. A whole bunch happening in Texas and 
I think maybe in Chicago. I don't remember. There's a there's a whole bunch coming up. So um, they're doing it, but I think the release is going to come out in um, the end of the summer, like uh, streaming service. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it specifically because things could happen, but there's a streaming service that's going to come out on and also will be released on Blu-ray and there'll be a soundtrack as, as well released. Um, uh, so yeah, all that stuff's in the works. Oh, okay. I would say <laughs> by towards the, towards the end of the year, it should all be done. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. Cause I was, I was interested in maybe trying to host one in Providence. Cause um, uh, I, I think that um, if you can get a hold of John Nix or Turnstile films on any yep. of their social media. So even if someone else hears this and this is on, this is on the, if it's on the podcast of uh, like, uh, just reach out to John Nix um, or or Turnstile, um, and I think um, Turnstile Films. Uh, sh- you know, sh- uh, I think anybody would. Um, be, I think they'd be into anybody doing any of them. Like it's yeah, cool, yeah. it's rad. Like yeah, yeah, so that would be. I've been in touch I think, with them actually. So okay, cool, cool. And also, there's like some uh, you know Providence uh, royalty in the, in the film. So uh, yeah, you well, know. Eric is the biggest one. I mean, uh, John Snyder yeah, uh, isn't really yeah. in Providence anymore. I guess he moved to Texas or something. He def he definitely he moved to Texas, but now he moved again somewhere else. So yeah, he's out of Texas. Right. Um, but but yeah, John and Eric are like two of my favorite um, human beings. So uh, it's very flattering to have them in the in the film for sure. Yeah, and that's the other thing I was curious about. It's just like how how do you feel like having a, a film made about you? Weird. Uh, it's totally weird. Um, <laughs> it's and I and I appreciate John like dealing with my shit. I, I I thought I was being difficult. He told me I'm. He told me in comparison to other people he's worked with, I'm not. But um, at first I was like, man, this is fucked up. I don't know about this movie it, coming out. Like, it seems weird that it should be about 3-1-G, not about me. And and I think between him and, and Luke Henshaw, who, who um, from Planet B and Satanic Planet, who did, um, who did part of the score, I think that, like, they changed the narration a little bit. And it now is a little bit more about 3-1-G. And so I, I, I mm. can, I, I became a little bit more comfortable with it. Um, but now actually that the film is done, I think in all honesty, I, I really think it should have been about Gabe Serbian, but obviously when it was being made and Gabe was still around, it, it, it didn't have like the sort of urgency or, um, it just didn't have the same like thing. Um, and so luckily I asked John if he could put like a post credit, um, clip with Gabe (laughs) and like a little dedication and that shit's right. fucking hilarious so and and also yeah i think because gabe's the best he, he he his parts in the film were just brilliant i and i mean i already knew he was brilliant but when he like everything that guy says every time he's talking i'm like that motherfucker he's so funny he's so smart he's really really cool like it's great he's just really great and then obviously yeah. his musicianship too so right yeah right well yeah so it's a it's a little bittersweet but um but um, I I think it was a great film actually. I mean, I, I did watch the the uh, you know the advanced screener of it, cool. and um, yeah. I mean, I I like I said, I hope to maybe try to get it shown here in the city, and uh, that's something I can talk with you about maybe a little later. But, yeah, um, of, course, of course. So aside aside from that, I mean, you're going on tour with Death Club very soon uh, mm-hmm. in the next few days, and by the time this Tomorrow. comes out, I mean, you're probably yeah. going to be coming. You're probably be <laughs> turning back around from there. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope I I come back being like, well, I didn't die. I wanted to have that level, you know, yeah. success. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, um, so aside from that, what else, what else are you working on now? Um, well, we just finished a planet B LP, our second record. So we're, we're kind of like putting the, the like last finishing touches on that, but it's been mixed and that's pretty wild. We started that before the pandemic. So we've been, we've been working on that a lot. Um, we just started working on a second satanic planet record. There's a couple tracks that are done. Um, and it's going to be way better than the first one, which is good. And then, um, I mean, working on new stuff always there's, you know, gradually we have some new death club songs. Um, and then I've been writing another book. I'm working on my fourth book. Um, Hmm. but it's taking a lot longer than I expected, but yeah, I'm working on that. I'm, I'm always going to her. I'm like, I want to finish my book this time. And then, tour is like insane and not and i don't do it but uh yeah my goal is to finish it on this tour right now so we'll see what happens it's okay um, it's, a, it's a hard one to write um but but I, I think once it's done it'll 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 be worth it so yeah cool man that's great and yeah. uh i mean yeah. I, I have to ask what what's up with dead cross you guys have the that <clears throat> second album out um were you ever going like were you touring on it or are you going to tour on it Mm-mm. 
I, I would love to know if we are going to tour on it. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. I would like to do something with that band again, um, but it's completely out of my um, hands, like as far as like if we will or won't do something. So right. um, if they all want to do it, I'm definitely down. So it, I, it just kind of, it's up to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh we'll, we'll see. We'll leave it at that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm well, not ruling it out. Well, we, yeah, we might do something again. I just it's not up to, it's not up to me for for sure. So yeah, we'll see. Right. But I right. I do love I do love that record. I'm glad it came out. It came it was weird because uh you know, we were going through a lot of shit. Mike Crane was going through cancer treatment and I think it saved his life. So I'm glad the record came out to save his life. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a great record too. I mean, I I've, I've listened Thank to you. it. Uh, I actually got a copy of that too and um yeah, definitely. It's different from the first one. It's more melodic. Yeah, well, the first one was written without, you know, Gabe Serbian was the singer, so we wrote it differently uh, and, and uh, with consideration of, of Mike Patton being the singer and also Patton pushed for having like a lot of, a lot more dueling vocals with having me sing, which I sang on most of the songs. So, so like um, with him, so, so yeah, it just, it had a different, a different dynamic because we, we, knew what we were doing i guess more than the first time because the first time right. when we started you know we were like a band for, we had a we were a band for 12 12 days we wrote it we wrote a set to play um some some shows that dave needed to, to fill and that was and that became dead cross so it wasn't like really thought out so right. it just took a minute to, to figure out what we were doing oh huh. okay so then the second album's kind of taken on its own life because now it's, it's its own personality kind of yeah, we know what we're doing. <laughs> Finally, <Right>. yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Not that I don't think the first record's good. I just think there's, you know, I'll be critical, and I think there's like a a couple tracks on there that are that are garbage. I really wish weren't on there, but it we didn't know, you know. And so now we now we right. now we know. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, great. <laughs> um, hey, can I just say that it's uh, it's been a pleasure finally getting to meet you and, and speak with you. Uh, likewise. Um, likewise. Yeah, I'm going to be mean, in Providence, actually. I think we're confirming like a last minute show of the Deaf Club tour, and we're oh, I think we're playing there. So yeah, I don't don't ask me what the date is, but oh, that's um, fine. I saw that you were going to be in my... Boston on the 23rd. So, then we'll probably be there like the day after or the day before. So yeah. if that happens, I would love to see you um, okay. in person. Yeah. yeah. I'll, so just I'll... get in touch with me, and, and and we'll meet up and whatever. I'll put you okay. on the list or something. Yeah, I'll yeah. try to show you some nice cool. place outside of the city where that you know you can kind of uh, uh, see what the state really a lot has of to offer. <laughs> yeah, I spent a lot of time uh, in Providence. I know I know enough about certain places now oh, okay. for sure. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, but like I would love to hang out. It'd be cool in 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 real life. Yeah. Yeah, man, that sounds great. Yeah, well, I'll do that. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So thank you, thank you again, Justin, for doing cool. this. I appreciate it. Man. <laughs> yeah. Thank. Th thank you. I appreciate it too.